a month ago I said we were done checking out colonies, but here we are again. But we have a reason now. Um, we're selling some colonies, and I want to inspect them before they get sold. And we just want to make sure they're queen right. And it's interesting. We're seeing brood in all of our colonies. Every one of them's got brood in them. And it's the 20th of November, and they shouldn't have brood. There's a reason for that. Um, we've, they've been getting a little bit of pollen. Not much, but it doesn't take much to cause them to rear brood. We have a couple things blooming right now. Witch hazel is blooming. A little tree that grows along creeks and branches and small streams up in this area. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some right along that little branch over there. And the, the pollen is interesting. It's almost white. It's kind of an off-white color. And then the other thing that's blooming right now is uh, camellias. Uh, camellias would normally do bloom this time of year, but the witch hazel's a little early. It normally blooms around the second week in December, and this year it's blooming uh, right now, which is the third week in November. And it's going to mess us up a little bit for our oxalic acid vaporization because all the bees have brood in them. Normally we'd be doing oxalic acid about a week from now because we know the bees would be broodless, but this year that's not going to be the case. So I'm hoping that we will still have a broodless period. I think it's just going to be a little later. We've had unusually warm weather. It's been in the 50s and 60s for uh, Fahrenheit for highs most days. And we're about to get cold. Uh, it's a little windy right now. We have uh, 20 to 30 mile an hour winds coming in this afternoon from the northwest bringing in a cold front. So it's about to drop a lot. And once the bees can't fly, even if stuff's blooming, they won't be able to get pollen. So I think they'll quit rearing brood. So rather than the last week in November, first week in December, I'm thinking our oxalic acid vaporization is going to get pushed back to the perhaps the second, third week in December. And we'll be checking. I mean, we have to spot check and make sure. You know, when there's a little bit of brood like this, they just don't get all the mites. And... Uh, it's, it's interesting. This isn't normal. So anyway, we're checking all colonies before we sell them to make sure we're not selling somebody a queenless piece of junk. And we this is our third yard that we've been into, and so far they're looking pretty good. You got brood there, Selena? Yes. Yeah. And uh, a little pollen, too. A little bit of pollen coming in? Yeah. Show it to me. What color is it? It's yellow. It's yellow. So that's going to be some... Somebody's got some camellias in their yard <laughs> around here. It doesn't grow naturally, it's, a, it's an ornamental, but uh, in this area, a lot of people grow them because they get flowers in the winter. And, it, and again, it doesn't take hardly any pollen at all. Just a little bit will get them rearing some brood, plus the warmer temperatures, of course. A lot of people don't know that fresh incoming pollen is the most stimulative thing for rearing brood, more so than even a nectar flow or a thin sugar syrup flow. If you've got uh, any kind of pollen coming in at all, if your queen's any good at all, she will be uh, laying some eggs. That's what's going on here. So we're also checking the equipment. The guy that's getting these bees is expecting real good equipment. And we've already replaced one or two boxes to make sure he's getting good stuff. Good lids, good pallets, good boxes. And I know somebody's going to ask, how much are we selling these colonies for? And they're going for $265. And every colony has a queen from uh, midsummer or late summer last year. They've all been treated for mites in the fall. So they're really in pretty good shape. Taking the rims off, of course. Normally, I would not be digging around in my colonies in late November. And they're very heavy. We're really pleased with the amount of food they got in them. They will not need to be fed right away. These colonies are actually going to Florida. I'm selling them to a friend mm -hmm. in Florida. I think he's going to be happy with them. He's going to actually take them to Florida and split them early, like probably February. Oh, yeah, you got brood. So also we're looking at the size. I don't want to sell them anything that's really small.
Um, we don't have huge colonies because these are kind of Caucasian mixes mixed with a little Carniolan and Italian so we're looking at colonies that are four to six frames of bees generally and that's big enough for us right here and as soon as they hit Florida they'll probably be picking up some pollen they'll start brewing, brooding up in earnest right away so these newer queens will do great nice location we're in Old Fork Valley beautiful day but it's a uh, it's about 60 degrees, but that's about to go away with this incoming cold front coming in. It'll, it'll be 30 degrees cooler tomorrow. That number right there, I-75, means this colony was requeened on 7-5. Uh, I stands for introduction. This one got a new queen on 7-5, introduction. New queen, 7-13. Feels good to be out in the bees, huh, Selena? It does. Yeah. We're being, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we say. We're going B in today. <laughs> I hope the wind doesn't mess up the sound. I don't have a wind sock on my microphone. You get stung? A little bit. A little bit. A stinger now and then is actually good for you. Yeah, a little bit of brood, just for the fun of it. I mean, normally I'd say you're done looking, but what's on the next frame? Just for the video's sake. None? Oh, eggs. Eggs, okay. Yeah, eggs. Very unusual for late November like this. But hopefully within a day or two, they'll stop that nonsense. <laughs> How's that one, John? It's, it's good, but not for sale. It's good, but not big enough to yeah. sell. Okay. Yeah, the smaller ones we'll keep, and they'll be fine. They'll come along. So this is good stuff. Um, the boxes are all good. The frames are fairly young. Lids are good. Pallets are good. So good equipment. Good stuff for somebody to split and make use of. Yeah, at first glance it's plenty good, but again, we are checking them because they're going to leave here in a couple of days and I want to make sure we're not giving somebody something that's accidentally queenless. Normally if I sell bees in the fall, I sell them in October while they're still brooding up good enough to judge. You know, under normal circumstances we wouldn't be able to see the brood. Good brood, huh? Oh, yeah. Is that full of eggs? Is that center full of eggs there? There's, the There's that yellow pollen. Somebody's got some camellias in this neighborhood. Um, yeah, that's made up. Yeah. You got it? Oh, it's really? Yeah, it's all laid up right there. Yeah. So see, doing oxalic acid right now would just have a minor effect. We're going to wait a, several weeks and see if we can get this brood hatched out. I think this is the end of the real warm weather, honestly. So do camellias and hazel witch Huh? They always put out pollen, but it's just usually too cold for the bees to go get it. That's correct, yeah. Okay. Same with witch hazel. Usually, you know, the second week in December is not a... You usually don't get pollen in mid, uh, early to mid-December around here. Right. And so uh, it doesn't always affect you. But here, blooming in the third, fourth week in November with this warm weather, we're sure... And I know where to go to see some. I'll take a picture over near Alley's. They got one blooming right next to the store there. I'll go over there and do a little video. Ah, we forgot the strips. That must be your fault, John. I could, I could, couldn't possibly be my fault. I remember Selena was on this side of the pallet that day. Okay. That's what I'm going with.
<laughs> but no, no, you, you definitely didn't do it. I know you would never. I would never <laughs> right. do that. I would never do that. Never make a mistake. So, this is interesting on this property. They're building a house right there. Well, the property owners already have a house up higher and they like having the bees here. And when I saw this foundation going in, I thought, uh-oh, we're losing this bee yard. And uh, went out and talked to the landowner one day and he said, oh no, we love the bees, we love them. So right there in front of their house, they're gonna have this bee yard and they're happy with that. brought some extra boxes and some extra lids and some extra pallets. I told this fellow that's buying these colonies that we would be giving him good equipment so I want to make sure that's what he gets. Anything that's not real good we'll swap it out. Luckily we don't have much bad equipment in our outfit anymore. Over the last five to eight years I've uh, kind of turned a corner in that respect. Got pretty pretty good stuff right now. This is downtown Lake Mott and there's not much to it. Old store right there. We uh, eat lunch there a lot. They have good sandwiches. We eat there at least once a week, maybe twice. But the reason I'm here is there's a witch hazel tree in bloom right over there, right beside it. I'm going to go over there and see if I can get some close-up shots of it. Well, that's a witch hazel bloom right there. Not very big, kind of a pale yellow. Tends to blend in, honestly. Unless you get kind of close to it, you don't see it. The bees do work it. They get pollen off of it. Normally blooms in mid-December second week in December in this area and it's blooming right now. Today's the 20th of November, kind of early. It's a cold day. It, it was warm yesterday. Today's pretty cold. Anyway, this witch hazel really likes growing right next to water. Uh, typically see them along small branches and creeks in western North Carolina and northeast Georgia. Not a very large tree. They don't, they don't get very big. Um, I've never seen a big one anyway. Anyway, that's where some of our pollen's coming from right now. I planted this camellia in 1994 and I've not done anything to this thing to keep it going. It's a pretty tough bush. It's made it through a lot of cold winters. It's blooming here pretty nice today, even though it's kind of cold today. It's uh, easy to grow. It likes partial shade, uh, acidic soil. They, they like the same kind of conditions that azaleas do and rhododendrons. Okay, this is an evergreen Japanese camellia. It has a long flowering period. It started early. Uh, we were about freezing last night, so this bloom is untouched by the frost. The plant was damaged two, Christmas, uh, two winters ago, about Christmas time, with a hard freeze. And as you can see, there are a lot of buds yet to open. Uh, these will open through the winter on warmer days. And this plant sh should still be flowering uh, as late as February. So as you can see, the center of the flower has a lot of pollen, and the honeybees do work this when it's warm enough for them to fly. Well, this looks pretty big. How old, how old is this thing? Well, uh, this is probably about 15 years old, but it was cut back because there was some tip dieback in that severe freeze. However, uh, even with the dieback, it is budded heavily, so it should bloom well this winter. The nice thing about this is that there's so much pollen per bloom that uh, 
just, just a few flowers make a real difference when there's nothing else producing pollen. This property has several camellias that flower at different times, starting in October and continuing until about the 1st of April. So while this is not a native plant, it is a significant pollen producer during some of the colder months when virtually nothing else is producing pollen. There are many varieties of camellias. Some are cold hardy. This happens to be one that does rather well in the climate of the southern Blue Ridge. And uh, it's, it flowers reliably each year.